A Stuart 10H steam engine build, part 13. Machining the eccentric sheave in the lathe using the small piece of 5 eighths of an inch diameter steel supplied. Marking out the position for the 3 30 seconds of an inch throw is very important. And this needs to be accurately measured. 3 30 seconds of an inch is 0.9375 thousandths of an inch. When I was at school, I was absolutely useless at maths. I think I have the numerical version of dyslexia. I'm okay with words, but not very good with numbers. What I'm doing at the moment is making the centre point in the eccentric blank a little bit deeper. Before I go any further, I think it's time to consult the drawing. I can't show you the sheet of drawings that I have because they are copyright material. So I've blurred out the image, but you get the idea. I'm looking at the drawing. What I've done here, using a Sharpie felt tip pen, is made a mark approximately 330 seconds from the center. It's really important to make sure that any parts that you're marking out are well supported so they can't wobble about. I am about to show the non-numerical version of marking out. On the steel rule, the graduations are actually cut into the metal, so they are slots. But using this method gives me a false reading. This is not the right size, but it's near enough. 3 30 seconds of an inch, as I mentioned in the introduction, is 0 0.09375. And if you subtract that from the measurement shown on the caliper, you will realize that it's a very small discrepancy. What I'm doing here using a center drill in my Proxon drilling machine is drilling a hole exactly on the mark that I made. I did this just by scratching it with the point of the caliper. And now, when I look at the very small centre in the middle of the piece, and the centre drilled hole, I can safely say this is near enough for rock and roll. In this clip I've created a pendulum to show how free the parts are moving. Everything is fitting together very well. The next part of the job involves drilling a hole exactly on this centre mark. And here I'm using a sort of common sense method. I'm using a live centre in the tailstock and provided this fits precisely into the hole that I've drilled in the eccentric by adjusting the jaws I can get this in exactly the right position and this is illustrated when I rotate it. Now that this piece of steel in the four jaw chuck is spinning true I can continue the machining operation. This is only a small piece of steel so it's not fully supported and it's a good idea to only take light cuts. I'm actually running a lot of this video at a higher speed using the video editor just to get through it because it's quite a slow process. At this stage I thought it was a good idea to drill the hole one imperial drill size under 930 seconds of an inch. Before doing that though I used another centre drill to enlarge the centre. It will make a better guide for the larger drill bit that's coming next. Before drilling this larger hole though, it's a good idea to slow down the lathe I think, and that's what I've just done. I don't have a variable speed motor, so I just changed the belt positions. It seems to be a logical thing to do and it's very simple, and there's no electronics to go wrong. Slowly but surely, I drill the hole all the way through the eccentric. This is a really good piece of free cutting mild steel. It makes the job a lot easier. And here, using a 930 seconds of an inch reamer, I am reaming the hole to the correct size so it fits on the crankshaft. As I'm doing this, I reflect back to the eccentric on the old 1896 engine, which was the strangest thing I've ever seen. And it was the most inaccurate thing I've ever seen, but it worked perfectly. This eccentric system to drive the valve is going to be far more accurate than the one I've just mentioned on the engine from 1896. I've got to the stage where I have to be careful now. I don't want to remove too much material from this part. It takes a grub screw, so I need as much metal left on this part of the eccentric as possible. All will be revealed in the next episode when I actually fit a grub screw to hold it to the crankshaft. In the kit of parts is a very small slot head screw, and I may use that. On second thought, so I think it would be more sensible to use a 6BA Allen key type grub screw. 
In case you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm just removing the sharp edge. When I turned the end of the eccentric, it burred over slightly on the hole, so I used the reamer to clear this. In one of the other episodes, I did receive a comment from an expert saying, well, why use a piece of mahogany? How are you going to be having one of those laid about on the bench? Well, well, it's not difficult. You just place a piece of mahogany on the bench. Some of the comments that I get are so pointless and a lot of them are stupid. I just don't allow them on the channel. And when I check where they've come from, there aren't any videos on the channel from which the comment was sent. So do me a favour, stop being critical of what I do. Why not make your own video showing how you do it? Then we can all have a laugh. It really doesn't bother me, I'm not intimidated and I can't take criticism as everyone is entitled to their own opinion, even if it's stupid. This small high-speed steel tool I've had in the drawer for quite a long time and I seldom use it. It's a small grooving tool. And here I am using it to make a groove in the eccentric and what will happen is a bolt going through the eccentric strap will engage in this groove in order to stop the eccentric strap from falling off the eccentric sheave. Personally, I do not like this method. Because of the groove, there is less bearing surface area against the strap and the eccentric sheave. The final part of the job is to reverse the part in the chuck and machine away the other end to just pass the black line that I made with a felt-tip pen against the eccentric strap. This really is a nice piece of steel to turn. I wish all steel was as good. A while ago, when I was working on a triple expansion engine, I made a couple of individually adjustable sheaves, which were really difficult to turn because the steel wasn't free-cutting. Nothing at all like this one. The finish on this sheave is really good. And I'm quite pleased with it. Here's a close-up, and as you can see, it's quite good. It looks even better when I push it into the eccentric strap. I'm sure this is going to be OK. Here it is in context with the engine. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.